So that's why a smoothing compound should be the last thing before you start installing your vinyl sheet. And therefore, I would also like to introduce to you the 680, which is also dust reduced, once again, never be dust free. And a good leveling compound, the mixing ratio here is 6 liters per uh, 25 kilo bag. Have in mind, don't go crazy. A good leveling compound can deal with more or less cup of coffee of water, let's call it, like, don't put coffee inside, I mean a, a cup of water. And the thing is, nobody will put in a leveling compound less water. Everybody would have in mind, let's put more, because then it's flowing better. And I totally agree, because some uh, leveling compounds are really hard to apply, or not really a good uh, way to self-leveling attitude, if you want it like that. 680, if you necessarily want to put 200 gram more of water, it's okay. It will deal with that. Not needed, but it, it will deal with that. But if you go crazy and you put 500 or 1 kilo more, again, you will destroy the leveling compound. Once again, 680, for example, I think you got 65 to 68 ingredients inside. Water is one of that, and then you will switch everything around. It is designed to work with a certain amount of water, and if you put 1 kilo or 1 liter more of water inside, you will destroy simply the leveling compound. It will not cure the right way, it, the, the, low, the heavier parts will go down and just the soft will stay on top and then you will have a soft powder at the end. If you go crazy with 200 because you think it's better, keep going, it's fine with me, not needed, but do it. And also have in mind, especially in summer when you are working, use every time cold water and sometimes it could be also useful if you got electrician to go to an ice machine to put some ice inside. I know maybe not so many times this happened. We did a job in uh, Saudi Arabia. For sure you got in uh, during the day 45 degrees and then you can put as cold water as you want. It still became warm. And then we had to add some uh, ice cubes inside just to keep it cold. Because adding um, warm water can also easily happen that you, your mixer will stay in the bucket after five seconds of mixing if it's a hot water or warm water. So that's why I also have in mind the same thing. This is but for all leveling or all uh, smoothing compounds. The same thing also have in mind. If you got the leveling compound for three days in summer in South Africa in your van, also the powder will become warm and not even uh, so less because in a, in a van you can get easily 70, 75 degrees, maybe more. So also that can have an influence once again on all leveling compounds. If somebody else tells you, no, my leveling compound is not uh, sensitive to too hot condition, the powder, this is not true. It's simply, it, it's warm up, then also the water it will accelerate the reaction and it will possibly cure in the bucket before you even are ready with mixing. So our, these are uh, extreme scenarios, but just that you heard about it. Especially if you are doing a, a big uh, installation where you need to mix it to have in mind that the water is as cold as possible. In 95% of the cases, the water that you get out of the pipe, even in summer and even in very, very hot countries, it's fine. This with Saudi Arabia, it was an extremely example, but it can also happen. So just that you are a little bit sensitive on that. Coming back to the 680, a dust reduced product can be applied from one to 10 millimeters in one application layer, and even in 10 millimeters will be cured overnight, which means 12 hours at the end, and it will be ready for installation. You can mix it with, like I mentioned, six liters of water. And before uh, this session, we had quite good question because people ask, yeah, but sometimes if I measure leveling compound, the moisture meter, so the Tremex will show me a humid result, which is true. If you use the same device for excrete or cement-based concrete, you will get another result on a leveling compound. You cannot use the same tool, therefore, actually, because a leveling compound, it's totally different designed like a screed. So what does this mean? That yes, actually, a device that shows you that the leveling compound is humid, but still the leveling compound could be uh, ready for installation. Once again, if you apply 10 millimeters, also for the 680, you got 90% of humidity during the night, possibly that it is not cured or the possibility is quite big that it's not cured on these conditions. But if you have 
more or less normal conditions, whatever this might mean, so 75% arrayed, 5 to 10, 12, 15 degrees, it will be cured overnight. So this more or less 12 hours. If you have really bad conditions, maybe you should really wait this 24 hours. So how many speeds do you get on a bike? We figured out before it was around five and a half, but it's a re we calculate with, with three, uh, three millimeters per square, which means one and a half per square meter per millimeter. So it means four and a half kilo plus minus. But we decided before that people said, which I totally understand, let's have in mind five kilo per uh, three millimeter because it's still, it's just, how can I say, all these tests also from other manufacturers are done on perfect conditions and on job sites on a more or less even screen you sometimes have some also small unevenness which affects at the end also the consumption on uh, the leveling compound that's why it is so the consumption is somewhere one and a half kilo per millimeter per square meter that's the consumption of it and have in mind it's a 25 kilo bag not 20 25 kilo bag so you got five kilo more yes mixing with six liters of water Do we have a, yeah, it might be there. Yes. Thank you. And also here, please, if you want to come closer, just to see that it's really a dust reduced product. Once again, I totally understand if you are on a big job site and people would say, yeah, I don't care about uh, dust because it's anyway a big job site, but it's not only for uh, the job site. It's also for the guys who are briefing the whole time that things. And also, Mrs. Smith will be possibly quite happy if you don't mess around at her house, if you are doing her bathroom and uh, everything is flowing around. So that's everything you got there. Thank you. That's okay. That's fine. Just leave it, just let it there. Thank you. Now, I got this question in the last days many times, never got this from somewhere else. If I mix it too fast, do I put too much air inside? Maybe for some products that can be a problem, not for the 680. But that's a question that I really reminds me on my job site because they were the old experienced guys and they said just mix the leveling compound and normally you mix it for one, one and a half minutes depending how much it was needed. And then they said, yeah, now you have to wait for a minute till you mix it again to allow the bubbles or the, uh, the air should come out. Leveling compound like the 680, after you mix it like that, can be directly applied. No need for uh, airing time if you want to call it like that. Definitely not. But the guys, I remember this so well because they told me now you have to wait a minute. I said, I cannot work with a clock on my, with a watch on my hand. You're stupid. You have to take three times out of your cigarette and then you know that it's ready for installation. I said, but I don't smoke. Yeah, then you're not the right guy for this job. <laughs> so that's also a reason why it's not needed to mix them again. For the application, definitely makes your life easier and but by far more safe, use a rake with the right, let's call them blade. Mostly available are R2, R3 and R4. But be aware that R2, R3 and R4 won't give you the same in millimeters. So an R2 rake like that, which we put here, it's not two millimeters. Simple because the water will also cure out of the leveling compound and means an R2 will give you, it's a little bit different, between 1.6 to 1.8 millimeters. 
uh, three also not three millimeters it will be 2.5 to 2.7 to 8 millimeters and R4 if uh, a higher level thickness is needed will also give you three and a half maybe 3.7 something like that just to have this in mind most important is when you are using an uh, R2 because you do not have this two millimeters even if you might have if you are using an R3 you're every time safe because you would mostly have the minimum required uh, thickness layer of leveling compound of two millimeters actually a little bit more and for sure put a stick and this when it comes to I will do it on my knees because I did it every time like that which is totally stupid but I think that I can control it better I know it is not especially not for a good leveling compounds because they need just a little bit to show where to go but I will still do it on my knees if I would uh, level it doesn't matter the biggest uh, area that I leveled was uh, 1500 square meter I was completely done after I did this on my knees but I did it on my knees because stupid once again because I did it every time like that I know that this is a stupid really probably the most stupid thing you can say but I still do it so I understand also the older guys that say we did it the same thing like every time because I still do it like that but here I just want to show you and I really hope for the other session it worked out let's see if this is also dense the leveling compound or the the floor we put here pew 280 and uh, the not i want to say splashy but i mean slushy no sl slurry. slurry no not slurry say it again slurry slurry pink primer so you would see that once again i really hope that they are uh, not going nowhere out of the panel and that's all I want actually to do just to see that once again I don't call it it is a self-leveling we would call it self-leveling compound but for sure a self-leveling compound especially on a bigger area you use a rack to support a little bit the flowing uh, attitudes and you see here I do not do more it's the same what I did also there without using a rake this looks not so perfect because we move it from here to there and we have been just happy that we did not broke it before it was cured and that's all just to see that it's an amazing flow which helps to get a really very very smooth subfloor and the result you can actually see there because this was done a couple of hours before, not even a couple of hours one hour before maybe do I need a spark uh, sparking roller I want to say a spike roller yes and no if it be only one room I won't use it necessarily because it doesn't make sense the smoothing properties are amazing so I don't need it if I do a whole way where I may be in the hospital and I am coming from more rooms together in the floor in a whole way I would use it definitely because that helps to allow the leveling compound to be every time fresh when it comes together to avoid any transmission into the floor covering later on but if you got I don't know granny smith's uh, 25 square meter bathroom or maybe they are bigger in south africa i don't know 50 square meter bless you then it's not needed but if you are really in a hospital like i mentioned and you are coming with more room from different side then yes it's it's every time good to use it therefore and you say you only do a hot valves um how does it join what do you mean once so again these people only want the passage their rooms and by the dining room, like everything standing in the living room. Mm -hmm. But the next day, they move it out. Yeah, just go close to the one that you leveled. Go a little bit over. So if you you install a little bit, then put all the furniture in the bedroom to have the living room more or less free, and go with the leveling compound a little bit over okay. the already one. And then uh, when you are next day, after you also put leveling compound in the other room, send it. And when I see go a little bit, I don't mean uh, three millimeters. So really just that you are a little bit uh, over that. And by sending, you will get this away. But really go over. Don't go, how can I say, just close to each other. Just a little bit over. Overlap a little bit and then you can send this out quite easy. And you see, that's all what I did. I did not even touch it and it goes everywhere. And we did the same over there. Not more, not less. I don't want to clean the rake, that's the only reason I don't use it. <laughs> and still, now the first day finished. We applied the moisture barrier, we blocked the moisture, we put the pink primer, 
pre uh, prepare the, uh, le the several levels, I want to say, the, um, the ramps if needed, close some gaps if was also needed, and apply your leveling compound. Still, the first day. Apply your leveling compound up to three, four, five, six millimeters, coming next day, even on bad conditions, which means high humidity in the atmosphere, and start your installation. Mixing with six liters of, of water, don't go, don't go crazy to two or three liters, that's gonna be very stupid to do it, but it's uh, not a good idea. Let it cure overnight and start your installation next day.